Hello students, welcome back to Top Notch Online TV, the ocean of knowledge. With me today, uh, teacher Thadiyan Baluka, your chemistry mentor and your chemistry teacher, I want us to look at the qualitative analysis of cations using the octopus technique. We are looking at the qualitative analysis of cations using the octopus technique. Remember, we have the various cations that can be tested in the KCSC. And these are the cations that can be tested and how they can be tested. So walk with me as I try to navigate through the deep waters of chemistry. So we start by looking at this scenario. We start by looking at a scenario whereby we are having solution X. In this solution X, normally cations are divided to main to two main groups, whereby we have the colored ions and we have the colorless ions that are not colored. So let's uh, start with solution X. And this solution X, assume it was a solid X that dissolved in water to form a colorless solution. So we start by looking at the colorless solutions. So what are the reagents that can be added to differentiate the colorless ions? Mostly we start by adding a sodium hydroxide until in excess or aqueous ammonia until in excess. Let's start by looking at addition of sodium hydroxide until in excess. So when you add sodium hydroxide until in excess, you are looking for three possibilities. These are the three possible observations. We can have white precipitate soluble in excess. And that means there is zinc, aluminum, or lead. We normally give them the mnemonic ZAP. We can also get a white precipitate which is insoluble in excess. We can also get a white precipitate which is insoluble in excess. So once you get a white precipitate which is insoluble in excess, is either magnesium or calcium ion. Remember barium can also be placed here. Barium so we can have magnesium, calcium and barium. But those two ions are enough to give you full credit. Now, you may also get no white precipitate on adding sodium hydroxide dropwise until in excess. So when you get uh, no white precipitate, then you tell us those cations that could have given you a white precipitate, they are absent. And those are the zinc, aluminium, lead, calcium, magnesium, absent. Not some books will say, if you don't get a white precipitate, you write calcium, sodium, and ammonium present. That is wrong. Because those cations cannot be tested using sodium hydroxide. It is also wrong for a student to write no observation, no reaction, colorless solution formed. Those are wrong observations. If you are adding sodium hydroxide, you are looking for white PPT soluble, white PPT insoluble, or no white precipitate. Now, under qualitative analysis, you use elimination technique. We use elimination method to go on eliminating the ions until we remain with one. So now, let's start by looking at a scenario whereby after adding sodium hydroxide, the observation is a white precipitate which is soluble in excess. So when you get like that, what is the next reagent that you need to add in order to differentiate the zinc, aluminium, and lead? You can add aqueous ammonia, dropwise until in excess then you get a white precipitate which is soluble in excess. In that kind of a scenario, the, the inference is zinc ions present. 
the inference is zinc ion is the only cation that forms a white precipitate which is soluble in excess. We can also get a white precipitate which is insoluble. In that kind of a scenario, you're going to say aluminium and lead ion is present. Aluminium and lead ion is present. Now we want to see. Now we have already been able to separate the ions from being three into one and two. Now we are only remaining what do we need to add to differentiate aluminium and lead. We can add aqueous sodium sulfate, aqueous sulfuric acid, we can have dilute sodium chloride or dilute ACL. Remember we are trying to eliminate lead because lead chloride is insoluble. So when you add any lead chloride and lead sulfate are, is are insoluble salt. So you add a soluble chloride or a soluble sulfate in order to see if you will precipitate a lead sulfate or lead chloride which appears as a white precipitate. So if you add any of those four reagents, you get white precipitate that tells you lead is present because lead chloride and lead sulfate is insoluble and it is a white precipitate. So if there is no white precipitate, then the inference is aluminium present. And again, don't say no observation. Don't say no reaction. Don't say colorless solution is observed. When you are adding this reagent, you are looking for a white precipitate. So if there is no white precipitate, you write no white precipitate and that tells you aluminium may present. Don't tell us lead is absent. You are many two ions. You want to know what is present. So if there is a white PPT, it's lead. If there is no white PPT in Amanisha, lead is lead is what? Lead is absent. So if lead is absent, then automatically aluminium is the one which is present. That is using the elimination technique. You can also add aqueous potassium iodide. Again, remember lead iodide occurs as a yellow solid. So if you add aqueous potassium iodide to a solution containing lead, you'll get a yellow precipitate. So if you get a yellow precipitate, then lead is present. If there is no yellow precipitate, then lead is up, then therefore aluminium is present because you are trying to differentiate between aluminium and lead. Now we are through with analysis of ZAP. We can now go to analysis of calcium and magnesium. If you add excess aqueous ammonia, you'll get a white precipitate insoluble in excess. That tells you magnesium is present. If there is no precipitate, should be no white precipitate, then automatically you confirm calcium. The most correct here it should be no white precipitate and you tell us now calcium or barium is present if you put barium. Remember barium and calcium do not form any white precipitate with, eh, with aqueous ammonia. So I've said the most correct observation here let the student write no white precipitate. Then you can add sodium sulfate or sulfuric acid. That is now to differentiate calcium and barium. So if there is white PPT, that is calcium because calcium sulfate is an insoluble salt. Then no white precipitate, that is now magnesium is present. Now we are through with now those cations that form the white PPT which is insoluble in excess aqueous sodium hydroxide. Now we had the one for no white precipitate that is zinc aluminium, lead, calcium, magnesium, abundant. Then now we go to how to differentiate the colorless ions using aqueous ammonia. So when you add aqueous ammonia, there are three possibilities. White precipitate, which is soluble, that is zinc. White precipitate, which is insoluble, that is aluminium, lead, and magnesium. In other words, we call it PAM. Pamela, palm. P for 
lead ions A for aluminium and M for magnesium pump is present white PPT insoluble in excess aqueous ammonia that is lead aluminium and magnesium if there is no white precipitate then those cations that could have given us a white precipitate they are abundant and that is zinc aluminium lead and magnesium abundant to differentiate the the pamela that is the palm lead aluminium and magnesium you can add sodium hydroxide until in excess you get white precipitate which is so insoluble that is magnesium white ppt soluble that is lead and aluminium so when to differentiate lead and aluminium you get back to this scenario here so you can we don't have to repeat it again so you you look at the ways of differentiating lead and aluminium here whereby you can add sodium sulfate sulfuric acid sodium chloride hcl to differentiate that now we now go to colorless ion to colored ions they look very simple but they are very complex the colored ions we have the iron 2 iron 3 and copper we can call it kufefe kufefe cu for copper fe the for iron 2 fe again for iron 3 kufefe so the kufefe ion that is the colored ions there are only three we have the green solution if they are dissolved the green is the color of copper 2 ions and iron 2 and that one i want the student to get very clearly many students only think green is iron 2 copper is blue so green is shared between some source of copper and iron 2. some copper salts are green like the copper chloride and the copper carbonate you can go to the lab ask your lab technician to give you copper carbonate it is green in color ask your lab technician to give you copper chloride it is green in color so how do you differentiate our copper two ions and iron two you can add ex aqueous ammonia and droppers until in excess you get green precipitate insoluble that's iron two you get blue ppt which is soluble in excess to form a deep blue solution that is copper so that's a, a one range that can easily differentiate between iron two and copper two ions now if it is copper uh, iron two you can differentiate it further like this you can differentiate it further like this this now for copper two ions if now it is copper two that is when now you can add concentrated uh, nitric five acid hydrogen peroxide or even chlorine but for purposes of practical we are only going to use hydrogen peroxide so when you see hydrogen peroxide so you know we are normally going to we are carrying out test for iron 2 and here we want to oxidize it these are oxidizing agent so when you add it to a solution containing iron 2 it will be oxidized from iron 2 which is green to iron 3 which is yellow so if you see green solution changes to yellow then that means that iron 2 has been oxidized to iron 3 that is the inference that you're supposed to give the examiner iron 2 oxidized to iron 3 when you get green solution changing to yellow after green solution changes to yellow, you can be told to add aqueous ammonia or sodium hydroxide and you're going to get brown precipitate, brown precipitate which is insoluble. Again, that tells you uh, now, that is now again confirming that iron 2 has been oxidized to iron 3. Then for green solution, we can also add sodium hydroxide dropper still in excess. You're going to get, get green PPT insoluble, that's iron 2, blue precipitate insoluble, that is copper 2. Now, we have the other colored ion, which is iron 3. For iron 3, remember, iron 3, you can be told to test the pH using an inversal indicator, solution of paper, and you're going to get pH 1, and you're going to infer that the solution is strongly acidic. The solution is strongly acidic. You can also add sodium carbonate, Remember this uh, iron 3 is acidic by the way, just like aluminium. And many students confuse when they know they, they see in the books that iron 3 chloride hydrolyzes in water to form iron uh, aluminium chloride hydrolyzes in water to form uh, acidic solution. Even iron 3 behaves the same. 
Still is caused by the charge density. All cations whose charge density is above 2 will hydrolyze in water forming acidic solution. And that's the same explanation that explains all oxides or non-metal oxides with an oxidation number above 2 will dissolve in water forming acidic solution. The likes of carbon 4. The oxidation state of carbon in carbon 4 oxide is positive 4. Therefore, it, it dissolves in water forming acidic solution. The same with nitrogen 4. The same with sulfur 4. The same with phosphorus, phosphoric 3, oxide, phosphoric 5. So it is the, the charge density that makes the, the, the cation to dissolve in order to form an acidic solution. So iron 3 just behaves like aluminium. So because it's acidic, when you add sodium carbonate, you're going to see evaporescence. And you can be told to test the gas using a burn explained. So you're going to have bubbles of gas that extinguishes a burn explained. Then you can also carry out uh, uh, possibly a redox reaction by adding potassium iodide. Remember, potassium iodide is a reducing agent. So it will reduce iron 3 to iron it will reduce iron 3 to iron 2 and itself the iodide ion will be oxidized to iodine. So the way we are adding an oxidizing agent to iron 2, for iron 3 we had a reducing agent. So when you add potassium iodide to a solution containing iron 3, then you will see a brown solution or rather a black solid will be deposited. Brown solution formed or a black solid is deposited. The inference will be iodide ions oxidized to iodine. Then we can also add excess ammonia or sodium hydroxide droppers until in excess and you're going to get brown precipitate insoluble in excess that confirms iron 3 ions are present. Then we are not through with copper. Copper after having blue solution we can still add sodium hydroxide you're going to get blue precipitate insoluble in excess or we are also going to add aqueous ammonia whereby you're going to get blue precipitate insoluble in excess to form a deep blue solution. The other issue that is very direct is this, that uh, we can also carry out displacement. Copper, we can add a solid which can be zinc or it can be iron. So when you add a solid H, which can be iron powder or zinc powder to a blue solution containing copper, then you see there'll be the blue color of the solution will fade a brown solid will be deposited in the test tube and also we are going to have the test tube becomes warm because the reaction is exothermic. So then you are going to say the solid is above copper in the reactivity series or the solid is more reactive. It must be a metal above copper in the reactivity series. That's the way you can be able to frame it. And remember, after adding the solid, which can be made as zinc or copper, you can be told to filter. Then the filtrate contains the cations of the metal that was added to displace copper. Then you can now carry out further analysis of that solid to identify which metal was added. And that brings us to the end of the octopath analysis for the cations. Remember, this is summarized in one page. I'll be able to now take you through the test sample questions on qualitative analysis, testing both uh, cations and anions as I try to explain the concept of elimination, or rather what you call the concept of elimination method and also the contradictory ions, as some people have been asking. Until next time, uh, keep watching uh, keep subscribing you can like and also if you have any question you can post it on the comment section until next time bye bye